Yes, I didn't turn the microphone off. I did that on purpose. I will be on in a moment. Let me just adjust some settings and hopefully we will not have the snafu that we had this morning, which is not my fault because Streamlabs decided to go ahead and redo a bunch of shit and change shit just for the sake of changing it. We're gonna come over here. We're gonna go over here to live settings. We gotta do that. And then we have to come out here and do this one. Save, okay. Why is it on two playlists? Oh my God. Okay, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna take this video, the one I did five, 10 minutes ago, and um, let's go ahead and put it uh, private and we're gonna do done that way when people see it they won't wonder why is this video only really short okay now The stream yesterday didn't end for ages. When I came to open it this morning, it said stream offline. YouTube auto ends them after so long offline. Not sure what they changed. You know, they always have to fuck with things, man. They always, always have to fuck with things. Maybe that's good for a job that's like, maybe if you're making fucking license plates and you're doing the same thing over again. Like, you know, remember that woman in the library on... Uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. She's all she does is stamp shit all day long. Well, she wants the rest of it. Just like man, it works. Don't fuck with it. They fucked with it, and they don't tell you. You know, hey, this is. I see all these little clicky things. So I'm like, I don't know what those are. They've never been on it. So I clicked them all off. Right. One of them was a DVR. One of them was a 360 uh, view. The other one was a couple of auto starts and auto stops. I clicked all of them off. And then when I go and do everything, my stream won't start. And then it took me probably 10 minutes to get my stream started. Uh, and then I just like, okay, I got it working. People are interacting with me. Cool. And then I just shut it down as always. And I guess it kept going. Fuck it. You know? <laughs> this is why I stopped doing the second camera. It was a pain in the ass. Now I see they got wind of me. They're like, oh, let's let's piss them off some other way. Well, good morning to you. So I looked at last night's stream. The search page shows results seven hour, but when selected, the time shows one hour, 51 minutes. Yeah, I don't know. They always have to, those damn nerd burglars have to, if they just went gotten laid, they wouldn't have to screw with everything. Go get laid, dude. California nerd burglar. Anyways, good morning. So I was saying, I did not know that there was two versions of the Yag Tiger. I've never gamed this period. So this factory finish probably was never applied to these first Yag Tigers. But I think it looks great and I'm not changing it. F it. There's my, artist, my artistic license. Hey, at least I used the right colors. <clears throat> Maybe they took it back to factory and said, we, don't want, we want it to look red because we're fighting in autumn. I don't know. A bunch of red leaves or something.
But the Panthers, who put did some thought into them. So I'll be coming up next. And I've got the Dunkel Gelb down. Where well, I'm really happy with how it turns out. But I'm having issues with the green and the brown. And I'll, I'll talk about that in a little bit. The green that they came, that this set came with, I just, I'm of little faith. And this green just seems, just seems wrong. So, um, which is the original green? This is the olive green green. It, it's not as noticeable right now because it's got a wash on it, but it is really fady. Um, so on this one, I decided not to use that one. I used a different green. And, but I did the chocolate brown on here, but this one I did, I added a little bit of the rock brow. So this one's a little bit more red brown with the green that's supposed to be. And now those greens and browns, that paste was mixed with different stuff. So um, there's definitely a, um, some, a good reason to, to, to mix it up a little bit. But I would normally be discouraged had I not finished several of these vehicles already using these colors and know that it's going to turn out just fine. But if this was my initial run, I'd be like, what the hell? Because back in the day, we used to use Tamiya paints, and they had a red-brown, and they had a green, and that's that was kind of the standard. Now, it might be inaccurate colors nowadays, but there was no doubt in the 1990s, you know? Colors didn't identify as something different back then. <laughs> so, you know, I've got a lot of Dunkelgeld things to look, look at, and it's like, yeah, this looks exactly how I want it to look like, so... It's just Dunkel Gelb is such a weird color that if you have a, a if you have a vehicle that has green camouflage and you have one that has brown, the green one makes the whole thing look green, and it's just an optical delusion. Um, so, you know, shit happens. Australian Greg, there you are. Working on some uh, desert vehicles, are you? I had to put a stop to that. I had, I had to go back and work on the stuff that I had because I was just going down a slippery slope. I wanted to do a couple of vehicles just to see how if I could make them turn out, how I'd be happy with And Yep. Yep, I can. So we'll be back. We'll be back to North Africa. Next thing you know, I'd be like ordering oodles of honeys and stuff like that. I'm like, we don't, we need to finish the stuff we have before we can order other things. Just for my own sanity. But yeah, they only made, they only made about 80 of these vehicles. 11 of them with a, with a poor suspension, which I did not know that was the case. I am not a late war just like Greg says he doesn't know about the Eastern Front, I don't know about 1945. I just don't. I don't know about these weird units of uh, Panzer Division, Kirkmark, and th things like that, you know. Uh, Battle of the Bulge is late as shit as it is. I don't, I'm really not even into that, you know. But, um, yeah, sure enough. And they, they did 11 vehicles with this suspension. So this is one of 11 vehicles. And only the first few chassis were done with Zimmerit. I believe all of the ones with this suspension had Zimmerit on them, and none of the later ones did, the Henschel ones. And that's, that's why I looked at this. I'm like, this running gear looks really weird. It looks like the running gear on, doesn't look like the running gear on a King Tiger. You know, you learn something new every day. Yeah, I didn't know about that either. I, I, you know, I'm not one that's afraid of saying I don't know. I don't know everything, you know. And there's a lot of people that are just afraid of saying that. Like somehow that makes you stupid or something.
when in reality, people should be more cautious of saying things that aren't true because that makes you a liar. You know, I guess some people don't want, don't mind coming off as a liar. I don't mind coming off as an asshole, but I'm not a liar. That's just dishonorable. That's some dishonorable shit right there. So we'll finish up this uh, Nazi cap. Like I said before, all my Germans are Nazis, all my Soviets are communists. <laughs> that way we can make sure we're not sending the wrong message. There's quite a few Facebook pages, I'm surprised. I know there's people out there that cause trouble, but man, are there that many people that cause trouble? And some of you would say, yes, there are. But I mentioned this last night that there was a lot of, I got pretty thick skin when it comes to like, you know, put, putting the crooked cross on things. I don't want to show it online because it would get edited by bots, you know, and then I've got a feed that's damaged in some way and, you know, it defeats it. So if anytime I'm promoting a book or something like that. It happened to have uh, the crooked spider on and I cover it up. Not because I'm offended by it. I think it needs to be remembered, you know, who the who these people are, but you can't change the world in, in a video. But, um, you know, I don't have a problem watching things, you know, veteran groups and stuff like that. But man, there's quite a few groups that I've seen recently that... Um, that have uh, content regarding German veterans. And there's some comments that are hopefully done tongue in cheek. And um, stuff along the lines of, you know, the true defenders of Europe. And I'm like, there's, there's no way that there's people that are this you know, <laughs> there's no way that people are this clueless. I finished my first WD vehicle today. Western Desert, okay. Um, a Vickers Mark II light tank in 1940. I've almost completed the two M1340s. I'm awaiting decals for the UK theme for Operation Compass. Yeah, you got any F-1939s? What a terrible vehicle. I was reading that book on the Desert Warfare, and it was really good, and then I just stopped. I had to get a new phone, and I got to put all this stuff back on it with Audible and stuff. But that Desert War thing is pretty interesting. Learning a lot of details that, it's got a lot of details in there that I didn't know about. And you could probably use an you could use enamel and do this. I don't want to cover the whole thing, and I don't want to work with enamels. They're just not. They're not. They're not friendly. I don't want to cover the whole thing in some clear coat of 
acrylic clear coat just so I can do the washing thing and and then create I'm just that's just too much work I got this Tamiya panel line thing I'm probably gonna return it I'm really happy with the Nuln oil it's really subtle if I need to put more I put more I would have tried the army painter one but they just keep being out of it there we go How knowledgeable are you on Italian staff cars in World War II? I have a mystery 15 millimeter one and I got in a bag and I can't 100% identify. Oh, I bet I could figure it out. Send it to me. Somebody was asking a question on one of the other groups about a year ago about what vehicle was, what Italian vehicle was used to tow their 47 millimeter anti-tank gun. Um, and I may not come up with the right answer, but I'm a really good educated guesser. Like I gotta make a, and I think it was doing all those DVA armies. I'm really good at coming up with the decision and then just like living with it. You know, just, just you don't want to spend a lot of hours working on something and then you made the wrong decision. So, you know. Like, I don't know how I'm going to paint these guys. You know, that kind of stuff. We have to pull things out of your nether regions. I like those Italian trucks, man. They're wild looking. They apparently were all right. Those Lancia trucks, they apparently weren't a piece of crap. I read a little bit about them, and they seem to handle the desert environments okay. The old eye ties. The Sandy Fascists. <laughs> oh. Sandy Fascists. All right, let's see what we got here. Well, it's probably a Fiat. All right, World War II, Italian, staff car, images. Okay, how many doors it got? Two, all right. It's not that one, it's not that one. These Italian vehicles with the huge tires, man. Freaking crazy stuff. Is it this? A Fiat 508? It kind of looks like a Fiat 508. <clears throat> but this one has a soft top on it. Fiat 508 CM staff car. <clears throat> yeah, 
Here's a Fiat 508 without the CM. Soft top. Sure looking a lot like a Fiat 508. All right, let's, let's, let's do a search for Fiat 508. Fiat 508 CM. And let's look at pictures. Google image search, man, just solves so many problems. Okay, it looks like the CM is extended cab. It has an extra set of doors. So what if we do just a Fiat 508? World War II car. What set did that come in? It's the responsibility of the manufacturer to put on there what it is, but you know, they probably you know probably just threw it off to the side like ah Italian staff car yeah yeah whatever you know. Um, hmm. Now that I'm looking at it. A single windshield wiper, hard top. Has that set of rules? The regular war is conflict at the whatever it's called. I don't have a book on Italian um, on Italian stuff, so um, Italian staff car World War Two. Looking for a coupe, a coupe. shops is this a two-door vehicle because this looks like it Actually came with some Spanish Civil War Italian volunteers for Africa have a lot of flavors of war Africa Corps 15 millimeter units for bolt action 28 millimeter infantry company have started an Italian infantry battalion for Blitz Creek commander at 6 mil it was a job lot of stuff it actually is a chrome plated model but I undercoated it with black primer a regular wars looks pretty interesting you use DVA basing with two stands together I was looking at some Irish and remembered my army man I love my Irish I love my Irish. Odago. And I won't play DBA again, but maybe sometime in the future I'll use those to play some other rule system. Like, um, uh, Impetus, which I have the rules. I've had the rules and just never played it. I'm just, it's just not where I want to be right now. Work needs to slow down. We were actually working before I actually said, you know, I'm not doing DBA anymore. I was actually working to add some flavor to the DBA game. But it's just very difficult to do that when you can't plan around who's going to show up on a given evening.
And I was already looking to get back into World War II. There's too many cool things out there that um, that folks are creating for me not to jump on that bandwagon. And I already had lots of vehicles to do. Anyhow, so I'll get back to doing infantry here in a second. <laughs> But these rules are, I said, man, maybe I'll take a look at them this weekend because I got a bachelor weekend. Not that my wife really keeps me from doing anything. It's just kind of an excuse like, ah, wife's around. I don't feel like messing with it. But my, my, um, my rules are stuck in a, in a, in a hole in the garage. Let's put a dark spot across the top of this tracks. These tracks. Good Lord. Speaking like a toothless wonder. I know we're going to paint these things, but then we're going to need a shadow here at the spot between them and the other thing. shovel I'm a I'm a I'm a miniatures guy more than I am a rules person and what I mean by that is I'm more interested in interacting with somebody who's in interested in the same period or, or the same scale that I'm doing, even if they're using it for rapid fire or something else, than somebody who does my rule set, but they do it in like 15 mil. You know, I'm just like, I'm more interested in the models and the history than I am the rules. The rules is just a way to get the, you know, move these things around on the tabletop without going, you know. <laughs> vroom vroom noises I don't know what the hell this is on the corner but it sure looks like a dinner a bell like a big bell for a bike <laughs> ring ring you like tiger calling that reminds me have the Germans never been good at jokes or is it like a World War II thing <laughs> oh. have it anything with the two planes no We'll get there. I was feeling the pressure of having too much stuff over here. I'm like, okay, I got to knock this down. Then we'll get to the planes. No, I haven't done them yet. Nope. How, how could I do them and not show you guys? That's like, you know, that's like torture. No, they'll look just fine. And I still, I'm actually may do the Spitfire and that stupid underside black, white. It just, that is just so, I've never heard of that stupidity. No wonder they got rid of ne Neville Chamberlain. <laughs> Let me go get a drink. Oh, man. I've never heard of such a thing. That's crazy. Again, 
the Pacific is not my area of expertise by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm willing to learn about it. That's a step in the right direction, right? But I keep seeing these, I kept always would see these British aircraft for the Pacific, and they would have a blue roundel with a white circle in it, but no red in the middle. And I'm like, what is that, Australians or something? And I think that they did that. The same reason that the U.S. got rid of the little circle in the middle of their star is because they thought it was getting shot down by, you know, oh, me, meatball, you know. Like, look, it's tiny. Like, pay attention, man. Too much rum ration. It's a Fiat 508 Bali Balila. The logo on the grill is the same as the Balilas. I think the issue of German humor was covered in a Monty Python skit. <laughs> German humor or lack thereof. However you say it in Italian, Balila. I wonder what that means. Probably a creature. You suppose it saved paint? Yeah, I guess if you're that worried about it. It just looks weird. I thought it was the Australian symbol. Maybe it is. I don't know. The British roundel doesn't need to be improved, though. It's like a perfect symbol. And the French one's good, too, even though it's polar opposite. And I, like, I personally like the U.S. planes with the red in the center. I do. I think it looks better. Looks don't win wars. No. But they make you want to build a model or not. Why do you think the German stuff's so popular? Because it looks cool. Generally. This is actually really relaxing to do. All right, we did not do this side, so let's go ahead and put some shadowness there. What I'll be really interested to do is how the King Tigers turn out. Because the King Tiger model was a pizza chip. It was really poor. I may actually hand brush paint that. But I want to get this drawing so we can work on the Panthers. So I can talk about that green and how I'm kind of dissatisfied with the green that they give you but sometimes you just have to do artistic license to make things pop
give the right contrast. This green on the Pruma, we needed to brighten it up a little bit. It was too, um, you could hardly see it. It's the official green. Now this one we did right out of the box because it's a weird ass green color. Balila generally mean, means little boy. That's why Italians didn't do well in the desert. They spent too much time riding in little boys. Australians dropped the inner circle in 1942 after suffering from friendly fire. Like I said, no more rum rations. Didn't the Australians add like a kangaroo in the middle of it? That looks cool. I support kangaroos on things. That might have been post-war or something like that. I want to say I've seen a... What was that aircraft? Um, they had the weird counter-rotating prop propellers. A ferry something or another. Um, but that was a post-war plane. I think... I'm, unless I'm just making this stuff up. Ferry... don't know what it is. Some kind of Australian fairy. <laughs> God, what is that plane? It's a cool plane. It's a really cool plane. It has like counter-rotating propellers or something like that. Or, or two sets of propellers on the front. Um, fairy... Post war prop plane. Is it the Gannet? No. No, that's not the one I'm thinking of. No, it's a, I think it's a fairy. You know, the two planes I get mixed up, I know they're totally different, but I put them in the same category. Is the Paul Defiant and um, the Ferry Fulmar. Probably because they were both kind of unsuccessful. And I guess they're twin engine fighters. Although the, the Paul Defiant doesn't have any front firing machine guns, if I remember correctly. It's a cool looking plane, though. Kangaroo was introduced in the mid fifties. Ah, was it a new green or just ended up being too light when applying? Nah, it just doesn't look right. It doesn't look correct compared to every illustration you see of German tanks. It just looks wrong. So you tinker with it. You know, there's no reason you got to get stuck with it. So I got a little bit of this, and then we're gonna go jump on the Panthers and get them fixed up. Because what I did is I did Dunkel Gelb on both of them. And uh, we, they've, they've got a wash. But one of them we decided to do the chocolate brown. One of them we added a little bit of the rock brow in it. Make it a little bit more rust colored. And the other one we used the stock green. So this is the stock green. Which you can barely see. It, it's very mild colored. Um, which, you know, we're probably going to tinker with a little bit. So it pops a little bit more. And this is so with, with the non-stock brown. And this one is the stock brown with, a, with the non-stock green. We lightened it up a little bit. So these are going to be a pair of Penzer Lair uh, Panthers. I know some of the Panthers that came from, Pan, from Penzer Lair were just um, didn't have any camouflage on them. We decided not to do those. If I need more, which I'm, I'm up to like 10 Panthers now. If I need more, I'll buy more of them and we'll make them just... Straight dunkle gel, but 
They're going to have oversized numbers hand painted on the turrets. Um, and they're going to have some of the extra track links that I've made with green stuff on the turrets. So, good stuff a coming. Would I have this many Panthers? I don't know, because I'm just painting them. They're not going to show up on the battlefield. I mean, hell, having three on one side is just too many tanks for this. Unless you do something that's all tanks. But this is the opposite of DBA. You're not going to finish this in an afternoon. This is a, a mini series. But you're also going to get details that are anything but abstract. Interesting, this has a little weld spot where it goes around the corner, but it doesn't have it on this side. You know, the interlocking around the corner. It's on this side, but not on this one. Maybe the Chinese missed it when they made this thing. When they made this model. Let's go around these little rivets so they stand out nicely. If they encounter one of these, odds are they don't have good experience for the crew. Now, I remember reading Carius's memoirs, and he ended up commanding some of these late in the war. And I don't remember—I don't remember them being really successful. 
I don't remember exactly the details. I didn't read it that long ago or had an audible that long, not that long ago, but I didn't love his book. Busy day for me, so must be going. You guys have a great weekend. You too, man. I'm going to make zero attempt to try to sag that track, which is funny because this Panther that I built in the late 90s, I decided to put thread through it and pull it down. This doesn't bug, bug me that much. I just figured the quality control this late in the war just didn't exist. I'm just like, ah, I don't feel like spending a, a ton of time on that. doesn't bother me. Okay, these two Panthers already have a wash on them. But before I forget to do this, let's paint the inside of the barrel black. I meant to spray it in there, but it didn't. I guess it didn't do a very good job of doing that. think I found I had another panther that had the same issue and I saw it the other day we don't want to we don't want to have trouble sleeping at night Britannia I was never a fan of Britannia sorry Sorry, not sorry. I can't. I can't like every manufacturer, but I got it because they happen to have it one time at a show or something like that. No more uppity barrels. Doesn't look like it. Okay. barrel all right we've got all of that that's going to need to be rustified and we have a couple of other rusty items that we need to touch upon Want to make sure I don't miss anything glaring here that definitely needs this. Um... Why did I end up moving the paper towels all the way over here? Yeah, I want to do that that French um, cafe. We'll call it a cafe, although it's not exactly what it is. Mainly because I want to paint the sign for it. And yes, I did look at pictures of the inside of the set of Alo Alo to see what colors they use for the inside of it. I don't remember. <laughs> Might do something a little bit more colorful. A lot of these, a lot of these French buildings are a lot less colorful than you would think they would be. A lot of drabish type colors, so you know they don't need to be you know garish, but. They also don't need to be all like limestone colored, which a lot of them were.
I was thinking maybe I'd do a road trip today and see if they've got any of the gamers grass in the next town over. But I'm like, let's just sit put and enjoy the shit you have. It's a wifeless weekend for me. Not that she keeps me from doing anything, but let's get some shit done. You know, I can do enough of my hobby each day that I'm tired of it after a while and I can go back and do the other stuff. So it's not like my wife keeps me from doing stuff. No, not really. This really deserves some kind of tank commander. Just be like, just looking over the top of it, but non-openable hatches. And just not going through the effort of doing the conversion for that. That's just, that's silly. That's a lot of, that's a lot of work. I was disappointed you chickened out of the Soviet. Really? That looked like shit. <laughs> that looked like shit. Well, I've got, you know, I've got one Ferdinand that's already built. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Um, it looks pretty good. If I painted it, it'd probably look better. I just feel bad about painting over it. So I think I'm just going to leave it be. Um, I do have another one to build, and it's an old ESCI model, and it's not very good at all. And you can actually build it as a Ferdinand or an Elephant. And the problem with building as an Elephant is then i got to put Zimrit on it or just, just say, hey, they forgot to put the Zimrit on this. This is what I'm going to do. I'm not, putting, I'm not adding Zimrit myself. That's just sadistic. That, that's not worth my time. I'm not a huge fan of how it looks to begin with, um, especially on a Mark IV. It looks terrible on a Mark IV. Well, I did manage to do something yesterday I'd never done before, and I've heard people having a big issue with it, and that is I bent my needle on my airbrush. Now, I don't think it had it. It wasn't severely bent. Now, how did I do that? Because it fell on the floor and it landed right on the damn needle. And it got to, I mean, I can feel it. I can't see it. So we'll go with it as long as we can. I really don't want to throw another $15 at it if I don't need to. So like I said, if, if I have these issues come up, I know other people are having them because I consider myself a pretty careful person. But shit happens. And um, I heard so many horror stories about, oh, the needle bent. Well, you must have bent it really bad because I did a whole lot of airbrushing and it didn't seem to affect anything. I didn't do any worse of a job. So, and this just one of my needles. It was, of course, the 0.35 needle. Good morning. Late to the paint table. At least you have coffee. There you go. Been taking a break recently, reorganizing everything, so less time working on the bench. Hope we'll get back to it this week. Well, it's, you know, sometimes picking up your area is therapeutic. It's all about therapy. Yeah, that Ferdinand with the graffiti. That was terrible. Or was it an elephant?
None of those served in Western Europe. It was either Italy or the Eastern Front. And this vehicle, I think, was almost exclusively on the Western Front. Haven't done a deep dive on it yet. Not too worried about it. Not too worried about it at this point. This side, everything is good except that. Everything is good except that. And I was trying to see if these guys had like the little candy cane colored like ranging things, but I don't think that they do. I think it's just wood. I looked at several pictures today before I got on and I'm like, no. I really wanted to kind of do the little ranging, the little ranging stakes. No. I mean, I still could do it, but I don't want to invent things out of, out of thin air. Let me put my glasses on and see what this looks like about two feet away. That looks really good. That's the thing is I want things to look good two feet away and I want them to look good up close. And the only way to do that is exaggerate the, the contrast. So. Works for me. Anything else metallic that we need to put on there? No. So let's go ahead and get this color down. I also saw that there was some models of um, trying to figure out where the hell the antenna goes on this thing is a nightmare. I've looked at pictures. I can't get the right answer. It may be up here. I'm going to leave it off for the time being. I looked at models, 135th scale models on scale mates. A lot of them had like this little pencil mount here on the back deck with an MG34 or 42 back there. That was kind of interesting. Mine didn't come with one, so we won't be putting that on there. And we have this, the two little, the little wooden box that always likes to appear for the jack stand. Oh, 
How could we forget? The bolt cutters. Ubiquitous bolt cutters. Those are almost on every vehicle, too. Almost every German vehicle has a, uh, a fire extinguisher, bolt cutters, a shovel or an axe or both, and, um, and the jack, and the little jack box. Someone translated as a slogan said it was a Ferdinand. Yeah, the primer red actually looks, it's just, it's just nice looking at these two different, these two vehicles and they're just like non-standard colors. Let's see if I can get a good photo, show you the photo. I don't know what you guys are seeing on the screen, probably not a good representation of what it is. And it looks better in real life than it does in the photo. The human eye is just, um. Hard to replicate. Two totally different vehicles compared to the standard color. Now you can't tell on here, and this is one of these things where the other colors that are around that affect the color a lot. This yellow is not the standard Dunkel Gelb. It is significantly lighter, but it looks almost like an Africa Core color because it's right next to the red, and the red is saturates. I don't know. It just it, it it's not the same color as the regular yellow. Um, it's it's much more lighter colored. You just can't tell. Yeah, I'm real happy with that. Real happy with that. All right, let's paint those wooden things wood colored. And um, and these uh, mufflers, exhaust pipes, and the wooden box. All right, so wood stuff first, and then we can go on, go to Pantherlandia. Nope, we don't need that. We need beige brown. Which I don't know that why I was using beige brown, but I was watching a video recently of God, is it the two guys that get mixed up together? And I think they're both Australians. One of them is the painting Panzers guy, and the other guy is the um uh shit. Um Sonic Sledgehammer. I think they're both Australian. Oh, they both live in Australia. And um, one of them was watching this video. He was using beige brown as well. Hey, I like that color. It's nice. I don't remember if I got the idea from one of them. I certainly watched both of their videos before I started doing vehicles. I didn't want to get started on the wrong foot and not be happy with the results. You know, after I put 10 hours into it, I'm like, oh, shit. I guess I should have watched something before to see how it was going to turn out. But... I was a little concerned that I wasn't going to be happy with how they turned out. It ended up being nothing to worry about. But there are some new, different techniques that I use instead of doing figures. Washes mainly. And I've been pretty happy with how they've turned out. And um, they photograph well. Uh, I'm happy with the results. And I'm very importantly, I'm easily able to replicate it. So it's not like, you know, every vehicle looks like it's painted by a different person. It'd be like if you're looking at a comic book and every page is painted by somebody, is drawn by somebody different. It doesn't really work. All right, so we're going to paint all these things completely wooden colored. Let's go a little bit darker than that. I just I haven't used my um, wet palette in a long time. It just takes up too much real estate for a tiny little bit amount of paint.
needed for the figures for the vehicles, not so much. same bundle of sticks on this side. And we might as well put the wooden base color on this little box or the wood that goes inside this box. I say box, but really probably is more accurate to call it a block. A wooden block that the jack sits on, almost kind of like a base for when you get to work on it doesn't sink into the dirt as much still I'm still sure it does to some degree but I almost made several purchases this last week. I put things in shopping carts and then I walked away. I'm really good at that. It's all the fun of shopping without spending a dime. I can't tell you how many times I've bought, I've almost bought a King Tiger kit just so I can cast some of the other details onto the other two king tigers that I have but I need to stop worrying so much about it it's hard to find I don't know that I've successfully found a picture of a king tiger that does not have um, the um, the cable on it it has this cable that goes up the side and it loops and it comes back down on both sides so there's two cables on each side and it's hard to find an actual picture of a King Tiger that doesn't have that on it. Yet my model does not, my models, neither one of them has one. Because they're not a very good model of Pegasus King Tiger. Probably the worst model I have. But I think they'll end up turning out okay. But I'm having to do some TLC to them. And I'm just like, I'm just not going to throw money at the problem. They'll, they'll turn out just fine.
sometimes you can overthink things. Just need to just do it. Just jump in and paint your way out. Okay, and a little box that goes back here. My favorite things to do is paint things that are made of wood. There's the original thing's supposed to be made of wood. Make it look like it's wood. There we go. That's what I wanted to say. And my white is here. Yep. Always been a fan of doing that. Little wooden cannons. Well, I've always been a fan of it now once I got the hang of it. Just like faces. I love doing faces. I used to. Oh, no. In the early 90s. Oh, no. It's got a face. I don't want to build a tank crewman. I'd fret about how to do faces. And then you get the hang of it. And you're like, yeah, we can, we can kick them right in the face. We can knock this thing out of the park. Let's do it. I've been doing this. I was under the weather for a couple days. I felt okay, but I sounded terrible. So I'm like, I don't want to do. F I, don't, I don't want to do film and have you guys listen. To <laughs> no. So I haven't done as much of this as I would have liked in the last week. But I did play a fair amount of World of uh, Warships. <laughs> it's just something to do. I don't see how people spend real money on those games. You, know, you spend real money on a game to, to get a better vehicle or whatever, and then you end up fighting better vehicles. Like, Just enjoy what you have. earn it okay all right i'm gonna take a little bit of a break i gotta go take care of something and i should be back in about five minutes right back folks
I clicked on it. There we go. Come on. There you go. Good boy. Well, I feel like the responsible thing to do this weekend. Responsible is a funny word. Does not mean what you think it means. It's probably to go dish the rules out and start. Start working on them. Although I have a little bit of a headache. It'll go, it'll go away. It'll go away in no time. Let's um, let's get the rust. And we can be done with this big cap for the most part. What what color we got here? Light brown. Light brown should work. What's the other, other color I like to use? Oh, light orange. No, that's 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 a bit much. Orange brown. Orange brown is the one I like to use. Orange brown and black. I feel like the easiest thing is just create come to some kind of a scenario. I mean, I got to do a flow chart first. Um, create some kind of a scenario, something simple like, you know, a KV1 on one side of the board or a KV2 on one side of the board and like some check 38s and have to get across the board or something like that. I don't know. Just kind of the work, the mechanics. Um, You know, not even having any, not even having any terrain. I've read the vehicle rules, but I've never played with the vehicle rules. I said, "Well, how can you read?" Well, they, the rules make sense, unlike uh, <clears throat> other games that I've played for eighteen years. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're logically written. And get my scenario book on the Panzer Lair. It's already in there. It's in a box. Yeah, there's all kinds of shit I, I could do. I just need to stay on it. Let's sit around watching TV. Well, I'm not a TV watcher to begin with, but I got fun, productive things I could be doing. The other thing that painting like this is really helpful for me in, it keeps me from eating the house. <laughs> Everybody has the addiction, that's my addiction. I like to eat. Let's mix black and this. We still have some of this to the flow aid. why I didn't do German vehicles for a long time because I had a lot of them to do. I actually was surprised that I have Soviet vehicles more than anybody, anything else. That's kind of cool. More Soviet vehicles completed than anybody else.
Your addiction is taking too long on projects. I tell myself I get to it by this date, but then it's not. Yeah, that's... I, I don't want to have to get anything done by a certain time. There's too much of that at work. This needs to be like the anti-work. So anything that... If you use this as a way to break free of the frustration of the workplace, which is what I use it for, uh, it keeps me from turning into an alcoholic, then I don't want to bring anything that is frustrating in the workplace here. I, I don't want anything any, anything that's even remotely like that. So um, interruptions, I absolutely hate fucking interruptions at work and there's no way to prevent it it's they're unfulfilling you lose track of where you were and you mess up unintentionally so I don't want to be interrupted um, what else um, hot my work environment I'm always hot I don't want to be hot here like these people that paint in the garage, I wouldn't paint. I'd just, I'd give up on this hobby. If I had to do this hobby in like a garage, F that. Now, with that said, my garage is actually really cool. Um, temperature wise. I, it's just, it's a miracle. But So all of those things are things that I don't want to do any more of. Um. on my free time. And that's kind of what it's turned into. It's kind of been my way of, you know, being able to survive the workplace. Like I don't want to bring any of those items that are a problem in the workplace here when I'm not there. Uh, PPE. I got to wear PPE at work just because most of the time. So I don't want to wear any PPE when I'm not at work. doing stuff just because it bugs me it's like I gotta do all this shit because other people are irresponsible how about we just get rid of irresponsible people So yeah, having to stick to a schedule, having to stick to a, I got to get these guys done by a certain amount of time. The important thing is that you're, you're doing your painting or you're doing your hobby. It doesn't matter what you're doing. As long as you're working on something for the therapy aspect, that's all that matters. At least for me, I've tried doing the other thing. And at first you're like, oh, this is good. But then it just becomes like more work, more of the stuff that I have to experience. Mr. Gray, welcome. So, you know, one of the problems that I always had with playing in Mitch's place is he has a place that most of the year is very hot. I'm I'm in hot weather all the fucking time, 40 plus hours a week, and I hate it. And, you know, the only it, it is better to wear this and be sweating than wear your work clothes. But still, I don't want to do that shit for free. So I just got to the point, like, if it's hot, I'd rather not game. I'd rather not game than be hot on my own time for no reason. It's not like you're out doing yard work. It's just sitting in a room playing a game. Like, why am I, you know, why is my underwear soaked, you know? <laughs> One of the things I look forward to the most at the end of a work day is to take a shower and change clothes. In that order. So. Some jackass out mowing the lawn today. It's still pretty cool. It's probably in the 50s. Let's see what the temperature is here. I'm driving myself crazy having a code where I have to sign into my own phone to check it. 
Is it the 50s? 58. That's good lawn mowing weather. Even 40s. It'll, be, it'll warm up today. So if you hear that with this uh, microphone, that's what it is. It's some guy out mowing the lawn. The lawnmower man. Could be a woman. We're not going to make this super rusty because this thing hasn't been around long. Otherwise, it would have run out of fuel and been captured. <laughs> this is, you know, there's, you got some severe logistical pre problems by the time these things came out. Severe logistical problems. Now, I did go by the Lowe's yesterday and bought some super glue, some overpriced super glue. Because super glue didn't used to cost what it costs now, but welcome to um, Absurdia Land. So we're going to need to super glue this together. Yeah, Yak pants or Porsche? I didn't know there was two versions of the Yak pan of the um, of this vehicle. Of the egg tiger. All right, so let's um, let's get the super glue in. Go grab it. Gluing 15 millimeter figures down the paint. More going soon. You mow when absolutely have to. We went from living in a neighborhood with a third of an acre to living in a neighborhood with an acre. And I'm not mowing, I'm not mowing this. Because I have to buy a new lawnmower, and those lawnmowers cost like three, three or four thousand dollars for the privilege of for the privilege of mowing your own grass. I'm like, I'm not doing that. I'm like, it's I'm not, I'm not spending, you know, and then having to house that machine. Let somebody else do it. And then my wife can pay the bill, so I don't have to worry about it killing my soul paying somebody else to mow the lawn. Some things are just better to just be oblivious to <laughs> you don't have to seek therapy <laughs> yeah those riding lawnmowers are prohibitively expensive like you're telling me i gotta buy a riding lawnmower but i can't have a golf cart like no i don't want to do that i'm gonna have to touch some of that up And make sure we're okay on the front end before we do that. Yep, we're good. God, I hate that sound. Okay, no any good jokes? Yeah, I'm not. I've always mowed my own lawn, always, until um, we changed the grass of the old house to zoysia grass. It's incredible. But it was so plush that when you run over the the grass, the the rut that the tire makes on the push mower, you know, self-propelled push mower, it's what I've always used. It's not a big deal. Um, would push the grass down. And when you go over on the overlap, it still hadn't popped back up. So it wouldn't pop up until you were done with the grass and it looked like you had a bunch of mohawks. Like you're, you know, you're like you're some kid that's like seven years old and doesn't know to overlap it. It was just... It's frustrating to be that hot um, and and not be able to do a good job. So I'm just like, we're just going to pay somebody to do it. Because I had to mow it like three times to go over it and everything. I'm like, I, I don't have time to spend three hours every other weekend out there mowing it. It's just not a good, it's not a good value. 
I just had to get over the fact that I didn't want to pay somebody 10 times, well, more than 10 times, 20 times more than I was making as a kid. I got here's five bucks. Like, you got to pay somebody how much to move along? I'm like, that's bullshit, you know. I'll give you 10 bucks. That's twice what I was making when I was a kid. I don't believe in inflation. <laughs> this may work, or if not, we'll just have to call in the big guns, also known as epoxy. Varen bon epoxy. I don't know where the hell the antenna for this thing is. I have a feeling it's on the roof. I looked at pictures. I couldn't get the right answer. I think it's this little spot between the two round hatches and the roof. Ooh, we got it. Sorry for starting a little later than normal. Probably benefited some of you guys. You're able to come on, but... Ow. Now we got to do the front. I wanted to make sure that that was at the correct angle. Let's squish some of this down and then let's use a blade to put it on. I'm not a fan of super glue. It's kind of the, the worst of both worlds. It cures quickly, but not quickly enough. And you can't move it, but then you also have to hold it if it's too, you know. It's just a thing. We only have to do this one time. We don't have to worry about it anymore. I use it for very, very limited things. Used to use it all the time. And then epoxy came of age. We're going to glue some spare track links to the side of the the turrets on the Panthers, and we're going to use epoxy for that. Don't have to worry about it. They say you can debond super glue with alcohol. I've never tried it. So once this thing's done, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six vehicles to, to clear coat. Not that I'm in a huge hurry to do them. Okay, now, a couple things. There's a little gap that's been kind of worn out there. So I'm gonna take my rock brow, which I still should, ha I should have brought it in, I did, and a little bit of black. Okay, I still should have a little bit of black there. is the primer red and the black a 
What if that's the neighbor across the street that's not well? A little darker than that. Let's lighten that up a little bit. Okay, some of that worked its way out. And when that's dry, we're going to come in with a little bit of the um, Iraqi sand and, and lightly go over that. All right, let's see if we can find out definitively where the antenna goes on here. I have a feeling that it's in this spot here between these two where they give you kind of like this mini ass antenna. Mini, mini ass antenna. Who is that? Yep, it's the guy across the street that's not well. How you know he's not well? Guy can't go to his mailbox without wearing a mask on. Hey, maybe he's got he's got an illness. It's either respiratory or in his head, but. communist more than the mass crap. That's not saying much. Okay. Um, some guy was telling me, it's like, oh man, you need to try some enamel paints to your airbrush. I'm not going to. I said, the whole reason I went to the airbrush is so I can use this paint that's not toxic. You know, I don't want to smell these fumes. The the um, the lacquer coating stuff is just terrible. It just got really, really bad. Um, so the only other thing I have I can do is I've got the rock brow here, which is the base color there. Uh, I'm going to mix a little bit of Iraqi sand with it. And let's tinker with some highlight. You know what? No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use that color. And that color is that one. The late war Dunkel Guild. while we're waiting for that to dry. That way we can be done with this vehicle. We can be ready to fall per prey to some Pershings, which I don't have any of. Try to end some, some suspension down here. What brand of paints are those with the yellow cap? They are AK, which are not very good for for hand painting. They're superb for airbrushing. The other Spanish paint. So, 
we're going to take some of this, so we want to get kind of an equivalent of the base color and just some discoloration. I don't do chipping. I, I don't really like how it looks. It, it like makes the vehicle look a little too realistic. I don't know. It just It's just not the look that I go for. Um, but I, I like taking the base color and doing some some lighter irregularities just so it doesn't have a consistent finish and actually that's the only reason I airbrush is to kind of give it some inconsistency because I could be doing all this stuff hand painting it's not it's not that it's not that helpful but this paint hand, does not hand paint great it's way too watery it's way too watery Well, this stuff just all of a sudden like dried out on me. What happened? Let's try it that back here. I don't need to do a whole lot of this. I don't need to do any of it. I'm just kind of killing time while that, that little bit dries there. There we go, that's what we want right there. Almost kind of like they drag they drug something across it in it. Kind of messed up the finish. Okay, we got that where we like it. Let's put some over the yellow too, because the yellow is actually what's oversprayed on the primer red. And there's very, very little of this. It's extremely faint. relatively new vehicle just something I just do normally do on all my vehicles just to yeah, that's what it's what makes my paint style mine you know all right now we take the Iraqi sand we were waiting on it to get up we dry now dry enough very very little there we go and let's get a Dry brushy brush. This will work. It doesn't really matter. Blend all that together. This is the lightest of the dusting colors. It just depends on what your style is. I don't like using the powders and stuff. I don't like a light color to go in a recess. I, I know it's more realistic, but you can't, I don't want things to be lost on the details to be lost at a distance. Go over the, the decal. 
just a wee bit. This 115 is extremely subtle, but I think it works. Zimmer and pot a couple of those places a little bit more, especially over the the red. There we go. Okay, where the hell's a radio antenna on this bloody thing? Yeah, it looks pretty freaking good. I'm happy with that. It looks like what I wanted it to look like. It's the important thing. So... And I've looked at instructions of 135th scale models, and I still can't come up with the right answer. So, Yag, Yag Tiger Antenna Location. Oh, it looks like somebody's already searched for it. A command version of the Yag Tiger is built equipped with a star antenna on the rear of the superstructure. Okay, that's not the one. Attachments with side skirts are also modified. A standard antenna was mounted between the two front right hatches. So it is that spot there. Okay. Okay, here's the command one. Why back there in the back? Well, we're not doing the command version. Okay. Um, we're interested in doing the standard one. And how long is it um, about the height of the superstructure? About the height of the box? Okay, so let's go ahead and drill that out. And the first step to drilling it out is, and I don't, I don't like doing this until the end, because if I get this thing installed in here, it takes nothing for it to be popped out. And that's with me even using epoxy, and I will use epoxy to glue it in. Let's take that little spot, which is barely noticeable. And I can't drill into that because it's like a little dome and my hole is actually bigger than the dome. So it would just be sliding off that thing constantly. We're just going to take this little, you know what? This deserves a new.
How loud is that lawn mowing on your your guys' end? It's just annoying. The neighbor, the old neighbor we had at the old house was just a sadistic bastard that wouldn't mow lawn until like 3 in the afternoon. Like, you don't mow the lawn at 3 in the afternoon in Florida unless you're a sadistic bastard. It's hot as... It's hot as all get out at that time. Let's be real careful. And then we will put a little divot in here so that when we drill into it, it has somewhere for it to grab onto. And then we will grab our pin vise, which we cannot find without glasses on. And we'll see if this is the size we want, and it is. I'm going to go across the street and say, hey, can you keep it down? The people in England can hear you. What? This is a really quiet neighborhood, except today. There we go. Now. I think I'm going to try a different tack. Let's see if I can save myself some time down the road. I don't know if this will work. I'm going to go ahead and paint because the light gray plastic is showing. Okay, now. Now we'll cut the antenna. We said about height, twice the height of the superstructure. All right, let's see where my remnant is. That's not the one that's super thick. It's down here. I don't like using sprue. Sprue is extremely unreliable these days. And assuming it doesn't sink, could just drop it all the way so it sits on the superstructure. I actually like that idea. I might as well put the area of it that's bent down. That's a little too tall. Let's cut a little bit off. And we have part of this uh, wire that's bent for some reason or another. Where is my wire cutters? There they are. This tip, so let's cut this part off. Grab both ends so it doesn't go a flying. You can use that for a machine gun or something. Let's cut it down a little bit more. Make another machine gun out of it. Thank you. 
Yep. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix the tiniest bit of epoxy. You know, the guy across the street's retired. If I'm retired, I'm not mowing on Saturdays. He got all day Monday through Friday to mow. We've got a lot of retired people in this neighborhood, though. I rarely have a day off. I'm, I have very few days off a year, and if last year is any indication, I don't take them all. I don't take them all off. So when I take a day off and I'm at home and I see people that also aren't at work, I'm like, you mother, why don't you be at work? Damn it, I'm never off. <laughs> All right, now, this should work. I'm going to go ahead and put some of this on the tip and apply it there. And I'm going to push this through. Let's take a look at it. I'm telling you, the antennas make a big difference. Just a really simple thing you can do that adds a little bit of uh, interest, like, mm, what do we got there? Now, on some vehicles, you can't do it because it's got... It comes with it down, but like these Panthers don't have it. They're all going to have antennas. All right, let's get rid of this rust color and the Iraqi sand. And we're going to put the AK paints together because they end up, they go out to the, um, the garage. I just have them here if I got to do any touch up. And it's Panther time. So we have a couple of Panthers here. Both are airbrushed, just for simplicity. You don't have to use an airbrush for any of this stuff. I'm a firm believer you don't have to use an airbrush. A couple of Panthers from Plastic Soldier Company, both done in Dunkelgeld. Of course, they've got a brown wash on them, so the color is a little, it looks iffy. Looks like I don't know what I'm doing. Sometimes I don't know what I'm doing, but not this time, pal. So we changed the colors of the gray, the, the green and the brown. Uh, they came in pails and they, they were changed frequently um, depending on what they were mixed with. Now I've got the little side skirts, I may or may not put those on one of these vehicles. I am not a fan of the way Panthers look with them. Um, let's see, they go like this. This attaches like this, and this one would attach down here. I am not really a fan of how they look. If I change my mind, I can paint them later and attach them later. So right now, we're not focusing on that, um, because if we're going to paint the tracks and stuff, that's... A major pain in the ass to do with that with that in the way it, it creates a process takes a hell of a lot longer so the first thing we're going to do so both these are done painted with dunkel gelb um, one of these i use the standard brown which is called chocolate brown and i use the non and i use the standard green on the other one this is the standard green but the non-standard brown you can barely see the green it's not very noticeable so we're going to go over with the dunkel gelb color again bring it up and if we need to highlight the green or the brown, we have those colors in here which we can do a light dry brush to, to give some life to them. Um, and, and the same thing with this one. This one has the non-standard green. See, it's a little bit more doing. Um, it doesn't look out of place. It just, you know, there's variations to it. And um, that's what we're going to do. So we're going to grab the, this is the only thing I don't like about this paint. And I wish there was a Vallejo equivalent. I wish there was a non-airbrush equivalent to this. We're going to use the mid-war Dunkelgelb color. 
because this is the base color. It's it's really mustardy. Okay. So we're going to use the mid-war Dunkel Gelb color, which is actually out of the 3943 early paint set. And we're going to do a light dry brushing of this color on both of these vehicles. Okay. Uh, we'll start with this one. And this paint is really watery. Really, really watery. So having some of it soak up on and we can score that a little bit so this turns a little easier but I'm actually fine with it being a little tough at this point I don't have anything live paint here do I I'm gonna transfer on to something else no all right so how many folks here with me <clears throat> three all right let's let's do it um, let's get a dry brush this one will do fine there's no vestiges of anything. It's a little bit of that. And Dunkle Gill. We're going to get almost all of this off of it. And always start with the suspension. And then we're going to go over really lightly with this because we don't want to lose any of this dry, any of this airbrushing that we did. Now, you can do a very similar painting experience or result not even using an airbrush by just going over this. I mean, I could, I could hand paint the camouflage. And then going over it like this, it would look airbrushed. So that's that's as far as I want to go at this point. Let's get the do the engine deck. Then come over here. Here's that box. Where's the jack? Jack's back here, vertical. I want to do that dark wash because it lets the it goes into the recesses of this of this nice um, zimmerit that the model has. The model has a really nice zimmerit pattern on it. But I like going over it because it looks like you know it's faded a little bit, whether it's by the sun or and sometimes you'll see pictures of, or photographs of the actual vehicle. They don't look right, you know, because they're just painted poorly. Doesn't, they don't, doesn't look believable. It might be completely accurate, but it doesn't look believable. Specifically true of... Um, Desert, I'm um, not, not desert vehicles, um, snow vehicles. Sometimes a snow camouflage just looks terrible. And if you try to model an exact representation on a model, it's going to look like you don't know what the hell you're doing. Even though you got photographic evidence to back it up. And I'm just not a fan of doing that. Now, I should have taken a before and after photo, but. And there's going to be more highlighting on it as well as we do the weathering and some of that Iraqi sand works its way up. And also gets better also when it's um, um,
sealed. Yeah, that looks a hell of a lot better. Got to give it to the German crews who had to apply Zimmer in the field. They covered the whole tank sometimes, just never have it used for intended purposes. And the vehicle, I saw a couple pictures of vehicles recently where they caught fire and the Zimmer would burn off. Because it's not, I used to think it was concrete. You know, there's things that we used to know back in the, we used to think that we knew back in the 80s and just ends up being like a bunch of bunk. Like, you know, Zimmer, oh yeah, it's concrete. You know, the, the, the shirts and, oh, that's against uh, bazookas, you know. <laughs> yeah, there's some pictures of some Panthers in, in Normandy that has really roughly applied Zimmer in. Really rough. All right, we're going to go over this just slightly. As some people would say, a light dusting. But we've already got, so far, we got base black. We've got airbrushed in the base color with the color on it. Then we did a wash. So we've added kind of different layers of, of irregularity, some people would call it, modulation. I don't, I don't think that... I know what it is. I would, have, I would have called it something like irregularity just color irregularity just some some way to just you know things fade and change over time and yeah that's that's much better that's the same thing i did with all these other vehicles these pumas are the same this puma is the same color whoops If that had been metal, it would have been curtains for it. We have the nomadic Panzerfuhrer. Yeah, we can put them in all kinds of different vehicles. Just for a sense of scale. I got plenty of crews for all of them. I just, man, I've painted figures for 18 years. I'm ready to do some vehicles. Just something for a change. All right, same thing with the turret here.
on. This is the same thing that we did with the two Cursed Panthers. Let's take a look at those. Those turned out really well. Did shirts in the mount one. And really long fenders on the front. All right. Now, they're both going to have hand painted numbers. I got lots of spare track. This is the spare track that came with it. Let's go ahead and pull this out of the mold. And move the molds off to the side. And let's go ahead and trim the spare track stuff. find the green stuff works a lot better than the, than the white milliput. Has a little bit of flexibility, which I kind of like. I don't know if it's always going to stay that way, but I cast these a while ago. What's the top of that? In case it goes, runs around the top of the teeth. This is all garbage. And I really haven't experimented much with like doing little tarps and stuff like that. We'll get there. I'm a noob at this. So, so far it's very uh, empowering. It's been a very empowering experience. It'll probably really show whenever I get around to getting some M10 tank destroyers and cover them with a bunch of crap. We'll probably split these into individual pieces, but <laughs> we just find that the, the white milliput is a little too chalky for my taste. Sounds like I actually t put it in my mouth. It's a little chalky for my taste. The other thing is, is this stuff is really easy to be like, you know, it's a little too thick. So just come in and shave some off with an X-Acto knife. 
and it's pretty easy to do. And the coolest stuff about this is it, the molds are completely reusable. I could just melt that stuff back and put it in something else. I need to find like an off-brand Lego type thing and make a little mold out of it. Because this is like a good size to have the stuff in. Because you want it flat so that when you push it down, you're not, you don't need to go any deeper than you need to. And then you can lay it flat across the top. But Lego Lego is really expensive. I mean, I, I was like, ah, I'll go to the, we were at the, at, at the, um, at the mall in Jacksonville, and they have one of these Lego stores where you can buy, you know, exactly what you need. It's freaking expensive as shit. It's going to cost me like $40. I'm like, holy shit. All right, man. Thanks for stopping by, Maroon. The Cardinal. I don't know that I'm going to get the Panthers done in this session, but I want to at least figure out what I'm going to do here with the track. somebody to say the legality of being able you can't make molds off of something I'm not gonna sell them I'm not gonna give them to anybody I bought the thing there's always people that are like well it's illegal to do that kind of stuff I said you know really with all the illegal stuff that lawyers do I can't even reproduce this stuff for myself I mean, I'm not gonna give it to anybody All the, all the dirty stuff that politicians and lawyers do and I can't do even this? Nah. Go piss up a rope. I went through a lot of green stuff. I tried to not waste as as little as I could, but man, I just can't help it. First time really using it to this degree. Yeah, a lot of the Panzer Lair vehicles had the extra track on them. 116th Panzer Division had like extra road wheels. They would, like the big road wheels, they'd like bolt them on to the side of the turret. Kind of gives them a unique look. 116th, that's the little Greyhound Division. Got a little Greyhound symbol. And I think this is probably one of the first ones that I did. This one's thick. So maybe we won't use this particular one on the turret. Some look better than others. We'll save the good ones for the turret. All right, and this is all. And so is this. Okay. So. I have. I have a scenario. That was published in. War Game Soldiers and Strategy. I want to say it was issue 114. 
And it was an issue that involved a couple of Panthers, the Panzer Lair Division. Skirmish Center, it's vehicles only. And it has two Panthers versus like a bunch of M10 tank destroyers. And the two Panthers are actually historical Panthers. Like I told you, it's like, it's, you know, this one and this one. There are two, two Panthers called uh, Elsa and um, um, Edna, I want to say. Elsa and Edna, something like that. And they actually have them in a decal set by um, Star Decals. And um, let me pull it up on, uh, let me pull it up on I have a new phone and it no longer has a files. Let's see if I can, can I do this? Add to home. Thank you, there we go. All right, I'm gonna go to my files. I'm gonna go uh, downloads. So I purchased a couple, I'm a big fan of, um, of digital magazines. First of all, they're cheaper and they don't ever get destroyed. Just once. Yeah, you, you can get your magazine right on your phone or on your computer. So this is an episode that's actually an episode that's mostly about um, World War II armor. Uh, Ger Germany's infamous big cats on the prowl. Hmm, I wonder if we're building any of those. So one of the scenarios they have in here, this is War Game, uh, War Game Soldiers and Strategy 114. Uh, I really like the this way this magazine looks. It's very um, uh, inviting to build stuff for it. And this is the scenario. It's Ursula and Elna. Panther counterattack near St. Lo. Okay, and it's a couple of uh, Panthers from Panzer Lair. I believe they're from Panzer Lair. And this guy's playing is a scenario for what a tanker, which I'm not interested in. Uh, I was just kind of, I thought it was kind of cool that, you know, it involved some, it was tanks only. Yeah, they're both, they're both Alfst A Panthers. Ursula, Elna, and then there's an optional additional force arriving on turn three of Panther A 215. And I saw this scenario a while ago and I'm like... Let's do 215. So uh, this is 215. I'm not going to paint Ursula and Edna because, first of all, they're staff vehicles. And what does that mean? They've got like Roman numeral one, stuff like that. But I'm going to, I'm going to, also they have names. They name these tanks. Well, that sounds like it's pretty cool, except you realize where they're actually put the name of it is, is on this little bracket here that holds the um it doesn't even show it on this vehicle it's this bracket that ends up holding the um well it, it's not on any of these the the traverse of the the gun travel thing um but it, so it's on a tiny little place so you wouldn't even be able to see it actually you can't see it on any of these vehicles with any of these vehicles that actually have it on it no so, um, yeah, so uh, I'm going to take the decal set of these, those two particular vehicles, and, um, and I'm going to look at it. I already downloaded it. Um, there is just a wealth of information on the Internet, a wealth. And here it is. Panzer Lair Division in France, 1944, by Star Decals, 135th scale. And both of those tanks, Ursula and Elna, are here. So Elna is uh, regimental number I is I-4. And the I-4 is painted on the tracks that are on the side of the turret. 
<clears throat> and um, is this the other one? Yeah, it's in a it's in a tiny little place. There's this this little bracket that fits on the traverse. Uh, on the basically the the thing that keeps your gun barrel from traveling all over the place when it's in when it's on a railroad car or something like that, and, and that's where the nickname of the girlfriend is on there. I'm like, yeah, you you can't paint that. It's too small. You wouldn't be able to see it. Uh, I can't paint because it's too small and you wouldn't be able to see it. So um, these particular vehicles are all Panzer Lehrer vehicles. They tended to have stuff like this. Like this one has. A bunch of tracks over the side of the turret and then the number is painted on top of it they're all hand painted numbers so um, Ursula is seen both with an I1 and only one markings Possible that the one was something or damaged. It's very hard to make out what this says, but okay, so we got tracks now. If you look at it, and this gives you some ideas on how to paint the numbers. So we're going to hand paint the numbers. We already have 215 on there. The question is, is how many links am I going to go across? So if you're looking at if you're looking by the number of these little um, dividers it looks like a lot of this is two numbers uh let's see count the little loops this is two by two so this is actually let's see well how many teeth do we have one two three four okay so this is actually like let's cut one of these out we're going to split them in the middle so we can play with them and just see what looks right on the model. Okay. Okay, so this is actually like this. This is two by two. Right? Because it's four prongs. We got four prongs and it's two. Yeah. Yeah. So this is. I'm going to use I'm going to use another tool that I think is really, really handy and I have a lot of it. And that's the stick on stuff. Okay, we're not going to permanently put it on there, but at least allows me to put this on here and see what kind of a what kind of a pattern we're looking at. So we're going to go flip these back. Let's attach these together. Hey, I'm throwing all kinds of little tricks on there. Maybe you guys will find something that's useful. Maybe you think I'm crazy. Well, I am crazy, but I'm not alone. I got a, I have a lot of wingmen. <laughs> I have a lot of wingmen on the crazy train. Okay, and obviously this will be epoxied in, but I want to see what this looks like. So here's a, obviously it's not going to be green, that would be ridiculous. Um, it'll be, you know, colored like this.
and we do the same on the outside. I don't, I don't know that I like it here in the corners. But this allows you to kind of look at, you know, do I like that look? Do I not like the look? Does it look stupid, you know? Let's cut some more of these out. Hey, you can learn a lot from a dummy. <laughs> this, those got a little bit more smushed. Let's see if I can make out what the hell it says on here. Apply the decals to the tracks, cup the whatever with a knife, fit it inside the track blanks. Yeah, well, we're not buying the decals. I'm hand painting it. They, they hand painted these anyways on these particular vehicles with the Zimmeret. And here it looks like they're smooth, but it even has a note on here, Zimmeret. All Panther A's should have Zimmeret on them. Yeah, Ursula is I one, Elma is I four. Those are, those are regimental command stand vehicles. Command stand, command platoon vehicles. I don't like using super command type vehicles because then you know you gotta put the five star antenna, which looks really cool, but you gotta either manufacture one of those or order one, and that's a pain in the that is a pain in the ass. So um, this one over here, Is there a gap between them? Looks like they're all together. And then on here, it would be one on top of the other if I wanted to put one. But they kind of overhang the outside of this of this corner. And I don't really like how it looks. So we're not going to put any. We're going to do a set of four here. Okay. And um, on this particular vehicle. Um, and obviously, we can put some down here as well. I've actually never done that before with it. This stuff is super, super useful to use. White tack, hobby tack, whatever you call it. Um, you can do a lot of cool stuff with it. It's damn near free and it's reusable. Uh, I use this to, to hold on to the, 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 pan, the Tiger turret, the Tiger 1 turret, so that I could paint it. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to go ahead and sign off for a little bit. Um, how long have I been on here? A couple hours? A couple three hours? Yeah, a couple three hours, exactly. So this is what we're going to go to next on the Panther Project. And, um, you know, a couple of Panzer Lair Panthers. I don't know that I'm going to put the little, the little L symbol on it. I may actually do that. I may hand paint it on there. Why not? You know, um, I kind of felt like the Puma needed it. You know, but anyhow, uh, until next time, thanks for stopping by and we'll see you guys on the next.